Welcome to WNL Sports Weekly. I'm Jeremy Franklin. This week we'll speak with women's lacrosse captain Leanne Stone and baseball captain Nate Plain. But first a quick look back at the weekend in Washington and Lee Athletics. Men's lacrosse dropped a 10-8 decision on the road to Franklin and Marshall. Baseball was swept by Randolph-Macon in a home doubleheader, falling to the Yellow Jackets 3-0 and 5-1. Lizzie Stanton and Annalise Madison set personal best in the pole vault and mile, respectively, at the Columbia Final Qualifier in indoor track and field. And women's lacrosse saw a second half rally come up just short in an 11-9 road loss to top-ranked Salisbury. With me now is Leanne Stone, senior lacrosse captain from Darien, Connecticut. Leanne, welcome to the show. Thanks. You're coming off the close loss to the number one team in the country. You've already beaten Mary Washington and Christopher Newport. How pleased have you been with the way the Generals have fared during the non-conference schedule? Yeah, you know, I think we've been, we've been really, really pleased with um, how we've been playing. Um, you know, the point in playing these non-conference teams is to really improve and really raise up our level of play. And I think um, that's exactly what we've, we've been able to do. Um, you know, we've been right at it. Um, Salisbury, the number two or number one team in the nation right now. Um, we only lost them by two goals, and we were right in that game. So I think I think it's really helped to really um, you know build our confidence, um, knowing that we can hang with these top teams. After a tough regular season last year, the Generals went on the road and beat the top two seeds in the conference tournament to claim another ODAC title. Because of that, and because of what you returned this year, you're picked to win the league again. How do you deal with the pressure of those high expectations? Um, you know, I think again having a really tough. Um, non-conference schedule really helps to prepare us for having uh, for the teams that we're going to see in the ODAC um, but you know right now we're just trying to take it one day at a time um, one practice and one game at a time and really just um, focus on ourselves and focus on you know how we're going to um, be the best team that we can be and then I think um, from there everything will kind of fall into place and I think come uh, conference play time we'll be um, we'll be confident and we'll be ready. Your defensive assignment pretty much every time out is going to be against the other team's top scorer. How do you approach this kind of challenge? Um, I actually really like having um, a tough opponent to guard. Um, it really helps me kind of focus in on one player and um, you know worry about, worry about a tough opponent. Um, the coaches give us a really good scouting report um, and really uh, prepare us for you know specific tendencies that our opponents have. So and then our attackers um, try to replicate that in the practice before a big game. So. Uh, they do a really good job at that, really good job preparing. And, you know, when I'm in a game against a tough opponent, it's, it's awesome having, you know, six really talented defenders behind me and, and a, really, a really tough goalie. So um, that kind of relieves some of the pressure, too, knowing that my teammates, you know, definitely have my back. You've got Lynchburg, Roanoke, and Shenandoah all coming uh, to Watfield over the next couple of weeks. How important is it to get off to a good start in ODAC play? Yeah, it's really important to, um, you know, stake our claim in the ODAC. Um, these next couple games are going to be really tough. They're rivalry games, really fun, um, always a battle. And if we just, you know, focus on ourselves and play generals across, I think we'll be able to uh, come up with these wins and hopefully get that number one seed for the, um, the conference play and get, get a home field advantage. So, Leanne, thanks for joining us here. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm joined now by Nate Plain, senior baseball captain from El Cajon, California. Nate, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. The Generals graduated a tremendous senior class last year, but so far in 2014, you're nine and four, hitting 292, team ARA under 2.5. What have been the keys to the general success early on this season? Yeah, so last year we graduated a great class, as you said. Um, it's no secret. Everyone um, knows that they were a great bunch of kids and a great group of players. And so um, going into this year, we knew that. And that also, we knew that that would allow for a lot of opportunities for new guys to step up this year. And so um, on both sides of the ball, we've had a lot of young guys and new players step into the lineup and into the pitching rotation and really help us have this uh, successful start to the season. You're a very fast worker on the mound. What kind of advantage can you gain against a batter by accelerating the pace? Yeah, so uh, I tend to work fast, and I do, I do that mostly for myself. Um, it's the pace I like to work at. Um, I like to get the ball and go. Um, once I get in the groove, I kind of just kind of keep in that groove. Um, I'm not sure of the effect that has on the batter necessarily, but it keeps me in a good rhythm as well as keeps the fielders on their toes. Um, there's nothing worse than a, someone throwing slow, taking a lot of time in between pitches, and then um, just making sure the fielders are being uh, ready to go pitch after pitch. Um, I think that's what it helps most with. You're going to see time as both a starter and a reliever this season. You've already made six appearances, four decisions, and then one save out of the bullpen. How do you prepare for different roles on the pitching staff? 
Yeah, so I have served uh, multiple roles on the staff this year, starting a couple games and then coming out of the pen as a reliever as well. And so you kind of do have to take two different approaches going into that. Um, when you're starting a game, you know exactly when you're going to pitch. You have your pregame routine that you can get into um, and go from there. And uh, when you're coming in from the bullpen, you never quite know if you're going to get in the game. Um, you have to be kind of sitting around for a while. You have to stay in the game and be prepared when they call on you when the time comes. What are your expectations for Washington and Lee within the ODAC this year? Yeah, so our, our goal this year, as well as every year, is to win the ODAC championship. Um, in order to do that, you have to make the tournament to start off. Only six teams make the ODAC tournament every year. So um, our initial goal is to make the ODAC tournament. And then once you get into the tournament, uh, it's all about getting hot at the right time. So hopefully we can, we had a good start to the season. Uh, we had two big wins over Lynchburg to start uh, ODAC play. Uh, had a little sec back last weekend against Randolph-Macon, but um, we've been playing well overall, and if we can keep that going, get into the tournament, anything can happen from there, and hopefully we'll be hitting on all the cylinders and can win our ODAC championship. Nate, thanks for joining us here. Best of luck this season. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. It's time now for a look at the upcoming weekend. Sander Tallman, Aaron Jong, and Dana Lee all qualified for the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championship, and they'll compete at the Division III meet in Lincoln, Nebraska, with action starting on Friday. Both tennis teams will take on Mary Washington on Saturday. The women's match starts at 11, with the men's match set for noon. Over at Cap and Dick Smith Field, baseball welcomes in Guilford for an ODAC doubleheader. Women's lacrosse plays host to conference rival Lynchburg, while men's lacrosse begins ODAC play at Randolph-Macon. For WNL Sports Weekly, I'm Jeremy Franklin. Thanks for watching.